Hello, welcome to a special Q&A recording of Fireball, Visitors from Darker Worlds, one of the 50 official selection titles at the 45th Toronto International Film Festival. This film plays as part of TIFF Docs, which is generously sponsored by a and &E Indie Films. My name is Tom Powers, and I'm TIFF's documentary programmer, celebrating my 15th year at the festival. I'm honored to be here with the film's two directors, Werner Herzog coming to us from Los Angeles, California, and Clive Oppenheimer outside Cambridge, England. They were last at the festival together for their film Into the Inferno four years ago. Thank you to our audience for being part of TIFF during these unprecedented times. We are grateful for your support to keep TIFF going for years to come. This film is eligible for the People's Choice Award. You can vote for your favorite films at tiff.net slash vote. Uh, Werner and Clive, thank you uh, for being here. Um, like I said, you were at TIFF four years ago for Into the Inferno. Uh, Werner, can you start by explaining how you came to focus on meteors? Well, <clears throat> it is a continuation of what we have done before. So uh, Clive uh, was the the father of the project, so, so to speak. And I had the feeling when he uh, came up with the idea that this was fantastic because uh, we haven't seen much of meteorites anywhere in uh, movies or in, well, some science fiction movies, but they're, they're kind of silly. And uh, to take it more seriously and to bring in uh, mythologies and cultures and science and lining it all up was a wonderful idea. And, and I always said, we have to lift uh, scientific films to a new level where you have, as a kid, you would be excited and have the joy of seeing this. And if one kid wants to be a scientist after that, it would be great. Uh, well, Clive, in the last film, uh, Into the Inferno, you're talking about volcanoes, which is your life's work. Um, how different was it leaping into meteors where you don't have the same expertise, I believe? Absolutely. It, it required a lot more research with the Into the Inferno. I knew all, all the locations that we filmed in, um, many of the people that we had conversations with on camera, uh, and of course the themes. So there was very little new research for me to do. Uh, although meteorites is still a geoscience topic, uh, which, which means that I, I can read the literature and, and more or less understand what's going on. I nevertheless had to, to read a lot more uh, going into the very different avenues as well, the, the more anthropological side of, of uh, archaeoastronomy, for example, uh, as well as the, the, the geological side uh, and things like planetary defense. So it, it was a really ramifying topic to get into and very, very fascinating. Uh, Werner, you talk about the way the film weaves together science and mythology. Often we compartmentalize uh, those two different things. One is rooted in things you can measure and one is rooted in oral histories and traditions. Can you talk about your you know, desire to bring them together? Well, I think science and filmmaking has much in common. We are trying to articulate the invisible the incomprehend, uh, it, that the things that we cannot comprehend yet, and we try to articulate it. And this same quest is both in science and in filmmaking, as if there was something dormant in the real world and inside of our souls. And both science and uh, filmmaking can, can dig it up and can make it visible. And, and of course, what Clive said uh, about science, that's only part of it. It's also casting. You see in documentaries, what is overlooked quite often is the quality of casting. It's like in feature films. And Clive came up with fantastic uh, people whom we met and with whom we had our discourse. And we jumped into the unknown. But um, and, and to make these people out of um, nowhere into somebody whom you really love instantly. And that's part of what, what the filmmaking skill is. And of course, some of the things we couldn't film, like in Mecca, the, uh, uh, the, the Black Stone, which is uh, in the southeastern corner, embedded in the southeastern corner of the Kaaba. Uh, and um, 
you're just not allowed as a as a non-Muslim to to go there. It's a sacred site. So of course you stay out, and we we took some footage from a faithful pilgrim who uh, filmed uh, a moment with his cell phone. Clive, can you talk about what you get out of those conversations you have uh, with you know uh, from in, uh, indigenous histories um, and others that you're talking to? I think one of the very fascinating things is, is how deep uh, some of these mythologies are rooted in time. And it, it, quite often we can connect the, the geological evidence that we might see written in the rock record with what is, has been conveyed for many, many generations uh, through oral traditions. We, we saw this, for instance, in, in Australia with uh, some of the Aboriginal people in communities around Wolf Creek impact crater that we talked with. Uh, there, there, these, these stories uh, really resonate with, with what we see in, in the geological record. And that for me is, is something that uh, uh, is quite humbling in a way that uh, we've, we only discovered uh, scientifically Wolf Creek crater in, in 1947, I think. It was seen from the air by uh, some geologists. But of course, it was known to the Aboriginal people for many, many thousands of years. But Clive, we should also talk about you because the way you are so presentable on camera, that's a great asset that, that you are the one who, who uh, does the conversations. And you do it, for example, Aboriginal people in uh, Australia or on Torres Strait, the kind of decency within the curiosity in you. So there's no cultural appropriation. There's no kind of a dominant white uh, scientist is asking now uh, somebody from the Aboriginal community. The way you do it is just fantastic. And, and that's what, what makes the film so warm and lively and brings in humor. And you, you got it all. So, so you're the most presentable presenter you should. I, I think uh, if BBC is ever looking for a successor of uh, David Attenborough, you should be the one. <laughs> well, you've got your casting tapes, uh, Clive. Thank you. No, no, I, he, I, he's, he's really, everybody who has seen the film knows it already now. You have seen him and you know that, that he's absolutely phenomenal. We need, we need this kind of presenters. I, I, I mean, I don't think we can ever really escape our cultural baggage. Uh, and uh, I, I certainly, it, it weighs upon me a little as we do, do this work, especially in the way that we work, which is uh, to parachute in uh, for a day or two uh, for a shoot rather than uh, really, really uh, live in a community. Uh, so I, we ask an awful lot of the, the people that we have conversations with. And uh, it, it is, it is the most engaging part, I think, of, of the filmmaking, is, is to try in a short space of time uh, to, to really, really delve in to, to what people think about the, these topics that we're looking into. Werner, I want to ask you about visualizing yeah. Meteors, because one of the kind of mysterious things about Meteors is the lack of being able to see them very, uh, very easily. But you came up with lots of different striking visuals that will stay with me for a long time to come. Can you talk about that challenge of finding ways to visualize meteors? Yeah, it was it was a beautiful challenge. I was originally I was asked by some of the uh, financiers, uh, well, we we would like to have some real events filmed, and I said, fine, yes. Uh, we'll place a camera in uh, Antarctica and wait for 800,000 years. Maybe some big one is streaking by. And, and if we plant one, uh, someone uh, on, on a mountaintop in the Hawaii uh, Islands, uh, let's wait for two million years. And, and, and I think we might be lucky. So, of course, it was off the table. But you see some of these meteorites and they are almost invisible because they are like dust only. A jazz musician in, uh, in Norway of all, of all people opens a new branch of uh, science and we see them and, and now they published a book which is really beautiful of large photos of, of um, micrometeorites that are smaller than, than a, a speck of dust. And all of a sudden, in enlargement, three thousand times uh, 
uh, magnified. They, they are phenomenally beautiful. A new form of art, a new form of sculptures. But, but Werner, do you remember uh, uh, Peter Zeitlinger, our, our uh, director of photography, um, was, was very keen um, to explain that he could add some really impressive fireballs to our footage in, in post-production. <laughs> and I, I mean, it was the same thing with Into the Inferno. I thought the volcanic action was pretty spectacular, but uh, Peter really insisted he could make this so much better. Uh, so that's, that's something that uh, we've, we've always been uh, keen to push back, that we really want the, the genuine thing. Uh, we did take a very light sensitive camera uh, to try and film a meteor shower in, in Australia, but um, it, it still produced noisy imagery that we couldn't use. Uh, I'm glad that Werner brought up the Norwegian jazz musician because that's a striking moment to me uh, in the film. And I think it exemplifies this idea of the citizen scientist, that you don't need a PhD to to practice this. And I, I wonder if you know either of you can reflect on that idea that science is kind of open to everyone to, to be a part of. Well, it's curiosity. It's a fundamental deep curiosity that's in, in the human race. And um, it's a wonderful thing. And uh, I kept saying to Clive and I kept saying to everyone who was involved, uh, if we have a single child, a single kid, that um, would be excited enough to decide to become a scientist. We have done our job well. And of course it will uh, entice uh, young people. It's about the movie. The movie is about the joy and the excitement and the ecstasy of uh, science. And it's about the joy of filmmaking, the tone in the filmmaking, the joy of making the film, for example, in uh, Chicxulub, uh, in the Yucatan Peninsula, a, a really a God-forsaken place. And my commentary says something that normally you don't see on National Geographic. It says, this town is so God-forsaken, you want to cry. And then I play Anna Gabriel, a song that was downloaded on YouTube 250 million times, and the song alone makes you cry. So it's, it's, a, it's a way of doing films uh, that corresponds to the joy and the excitement of science. Just to chime in, Tom, on uh, citizen science, uh, it's true that it, it uh, can contribute an enormous amount to uh, pushing the discipline forward or even creating new disciplines um, with the, as with these micrometeorites. I, I think that it's double-edged, though. There's also... Um, sometimes it gives an opportunity to, uh, to say to the public, well, you, you decide your fate, you know, uh, we won't um, let the experts uh, advise you, you make your own minds up uh, on, on whether you want to stay on that volcano or not, it's not our problem. Uh, so there is, there's a, uh, another side uh, to that coin for me. Mm -hmm. um Clive, for those of us who have been watching Werner's films over the decades, traveling the globe, uh, I, many of us must have wondered, you know, what it would be like to travel with Werner Herzog, because uh, he has such a unique perspective and an ability to find these uh, incredible characters. Um, as someone who has traveled with Werner Herzog from Antarctica to uh, you know, many other continents, um, what, uh, can you describe what that's like when you're in a godforsaken beach resort in Mexico and the camera goes off? Well, there are two sides to it. There's the professional side, which is, of course, we're there with, with a very focused uh, mindset on, on coming away with, with the components of the film that we want. Uh, and, and we go into that very professionally with our whole team. Um, but of course, there's also a, a part of travel, which is uh, dining together and uh, riding in, in the, the vehicle across the Australian desert together, where we, we, we have a lot of fun. Werner has a very fine singing voice, um, uh, which, which one will discover when uh, dining in Mexican restaurants. Uh, he, he has a very good rendition of uh, Besa Mi Mucho, for instance, and I think Werner is yet undiscovered uh, he, he too could have 250 million 
hits on YouTube uh, uh, covering one of these uh, great, uh, great pieces of music. But let me add one thing about Australia. You see, I think we had one or maybe two tents out there in the desert and, and now came the question, our, our cameras were put together and it was very sensitive to place them and put them together and all the sound equipment. And I said, uh, the cameras should sleep in the tent. Uh, we should sleep outside in the sand, which I think pretty much everyone then did. So the equipment is more important than, than us being in a tent. <laughs> oh, that uh, speaks to the quality of images that you brought back. As I uh, wind this up, I, both of you are world travelers, and I wonder what it's been like for you in these months of lockdown uh, under the pandemic to uh, what it's meant to your work, you, you, what it's meant to your psychology to not be on, uh, on the move. Um, Renner Clive, can I ask you to reflect on that? Well, for me, I had to cancel two uh, theatrical premieres of two films, recent films, and I had to cancel a workshop in the jungle in uh, Colombia, in the Amazonian. So it's okay. You, you uh, have to live with it and you have to be disciplined. Otherwise, I, uh, I'm very lively working on, in writing. I do prose texts and I write poetry. So my days are filled. Uh, Clive, yeah, I, mean, I mean, your work as a volcanologist, volcanoes don't stop because of a lockdown. Uh, what does that mean for your work? Uh, it's it's uh, postponed a lot of plans, cancelled plans, uh, workshops, field work. I should have been in back in North Korea uh, over the summer and uh, also had a project in uh, Chukotka in, in the far east of Russia. Uh, it's been a great disappointment not to travel with the film. Uh, I would have loved to do that in person. I know Werner is a bit more jaded about festivals. Uh, for me, it's, it's still a huge amount of fun and part of the reward of, of filmmaking. Um, but on the other hand, I, I have colleagues who, who've gotten ill with this uh, disease and um, the, the impact on me is, is really been very, very trivial. Uh, it's, it's, it's inconveniences and dis personal disappointments, nothing more than this. Uh, so I, I hope um, you know, at some point it will be possible to resurrect some of our, our field work. Uh, we'll have to see. Well, uh, I thank you both for making the effort to have this connection uh, with us uh, across the airwaves in lieu of being uh, together in Toronto. Uh, it's been wonderful to have you as a guest in the past in Toronto. And we hope that can happen again sometime in the future. Yeah, We're working on the real trilogy. audiences. We should connect back to the real audiences and really have the laughter of people shoulder to shoulder packing your theaters. So that's, that's what's going to come back soon. All right. Thank you both again. Thank you. Thank you, Tom.